Hi everyone, today I want to recommend some queer books and also talk about some queer books that I really want to read. I am doing this partially in honor of Pride, but I saved it for the end of the month because reading books about queer characters should not begin or end during June. I also have a couple of other more personal reasons for wanting to make this. First is that I've only recently started talking about my own sexual identity on the internet in general. It's still a little scary, but I identify as bi or queer, and in all of the reflection that I've done in the past couple of months, particularly about the kinds of things that I've been reading, I don't read that much queer fiction, and I really want to rectify that because I want to read more of those narratives, I want to see myself reflected in the fiction that I'm reading, and there's a lot of good stuff out there that I just have no excuses for not reading. That is why I'm making this video. I want to talk about the stuff that I have read and really loved and would definitely recommend, and then also some of the things that I'm really excited about, particularly because I haven't read a lot of books that have bi characters in them. That's not to say that they're not out there, but I really want to seek them out. Without further ado, I have a lot of things to talk about, so I'm only going to give a brief descriptions of each book so that I can get through everything really quickly, but I will have links for all these books down in this description. I will be making a bookshop.org collection so you can see all of the books that I recommend, which I hope to frequently update when I find more books that I want to add to my recommendations list and take them off of my DVRs. So let's get into the books. The first of my recommendations is How to Survive a Plague, which is a nonfiction book about the AIDS crisis. We're specifically focusing on New York City because the author was a journalist who had just moved to New York City right when HIV started booming. And it, it was really personal for him because it affected a lot of people in his friend groups. So it does include some personal narratives, but it also does comprehensively go through the AIDS, HIV AIDS crisis, the progression of the illness, the progression of public perception and how everyone ignored it for a long time, and the negligence of our healthcare workers and our politicians in bringing attention to the crisis and resolving it much sooner. It was very powerful. I don't know that much about queer history and I want to learn, and I think this was a great place to start. The other work of nonfiction that I want to recommend is The Trauma Cleaner by Sarah Krasnstein, which is a biography that she wrote about a woman named Sandra Pankhurst who is a trauma cleaner, meaning that she goes into sites where traumas have happened, meth lab explosions, um, bodies left for a long time without being discovered, hoarders houses, and she so gracefully and compassionately addresses these issues and cleans up these spaces. You see several instances of her the job sites that she works on. You also learn about Sandra's childhood and upbringing as a trans woman and the trauma and abuse that she went through, but also how she rose above it. I loved the two halves, the fact that we do see some of the trauma cleaning, but also you learn about how she got to where she was. And I don't read very many biographies, so this was a really unique reading experience, and I absolutely loved it. The rest of my recommendations are fiction. I do have nonfiction on my TBR in the latter half of this video. I just unfortunately haven't read that much queer nonfiction, and I want to fix that. On to the fiction. First, I want to recommend Tipping the Velvet, or really anything by Sarah Waters, but this one I think would be a great one to start with if you haven't ever read any Sarah Waters before. All of her novels, except for The Little Stranger, have queer relationships in them. The Tipping the Velvet is special. It's her debut novel, but I think it's no less impressive than any of the other things that she's written since. This is historical fiction that takes place in the late 19th century. We focus on a young woman named Nan who is infatuated with this male impersonator named Kitty, and it's about their relationship, yes, but it's about so much more than that. One of the delightful things about Sarah Waters' novels is they have so many twists and turns. It's like you're reading a thriller, and I have found myself to be so emotionally invested in all of the relationships in her novels, but this one is I just really loved. I loved seeing Nan grow as a character, um, come into herself and learn about who she is and, and grow, and you see a lot of the mistakes she makes along the way, but I just loved her as a character, one of my favorite characters of all time, and I think that if you haven't read Sarah Waters yet, you can't go wrong with any of her novels. I haven't read all of them yet, but I feel pretty assured in saying that, but Tipping the Velvet would be a great place to start. Next, I want to recommend Unearth for Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. This is a poetic novel written in the form of a letter from the protagonist, Little Dog, to his mother, who is illiterate. It's a deeply confessional coming-of-age story about him being the child of Vietnamese immigrants, but also exploring his sexuality and reflecting on the abuses that he suffered as a child. Ocean Vuong is a poet, and th that is definitely reflected in the writing. 
which is absolutely stunning and I really love this novel. Next, I want to recommend The Subtweet by Vivek Shreya, which is the story of two South Asian Canadian women who are musicians. And when one covers the song of the other and gets a lot more attention for that cover than the original song did, you get to see how the music industry really pits women against each other. And these women do ultimately form a friendship, but the way that their friend is being opposing forces by the media, as well as the messiness and complications that can come from social media and interacting on social media and subtweets and misunderstanding one another. It is a story about it's like a really complex friendship and I think it's also notable that there are no romantic relationships in this novel but it's still completely fascinating and has a really great relationship at its center. It just happens to be a friendship. Next, I want to recommend My Brother's Husband by Gengoro Tagame. This is a manga series. It's a story of a man who must confront his internalized homophobia when his dead twin brother's husband comes from Canada to visit him and get to know that side of his family. It's a story about overcoming prejudice, love, understanding, and family, and it is extremely heartwarming and cute. I absolutely love it. It's only two volumes, and I would recommend it to anyone, even if you haven't ever read a manga before. Another graphic novel I want to recommend is Nimona, which I think had its a big moment when it came out a few years ago, but I haven't seen so many people talk about it since then, but it is utterly delightful. It is a graphic novel about a young shapeshifter who wants to become the sidekick for a supervillain named Ballister Blackheart, who wants to take down his arch nemesis Ambrosius Goldenloin, um, and it is very silly as the names imply, but, but it is super cute. I love the art style so much and the humor, and I've wanted to reread it ever since I finished it, and I would love to actually own a physical copy one day. The last graphic novel that I want to recommend is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki. This is a beautiful YA graphic novel about an abusive FF relationship and how difficult abusers make it for their partners to really leave them and move on from them. It also has interesting side characters and you see how this relationship affects negatively affects her relationship to her friends, and the art style is just absolutely gorgeous. I love the pink wash that all of the, the panels have. I just think it's beautiful, and I would definitely recommend it as well. In terms of sci-fi fantasy, I have a few recommendations for that as well. First being the Planetfall series, which I've done a full review of, so I don't want to rehash too much of what I've already said there. It's a series of interconnected novels. It takes place in an alternate reality where a group of people left Earth to follow a prophet who called themselves the Pathfinder, and so we're seeing kind of the ripple effects of how this one space mission affects humanity across multiple planets. The reason why I'm recommending this now is that it has uh, diverse protagonists, several of whom are people of color. It also has several queer protagonists, and it also deals a lot with mental illness. We see representations of anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, not speaking from experience in all of those instances, but overall I think it's done very well. I think they're really interesting literary sci-fi novels. If you haven't read the Broken Earth series yet, I definitely want to recommend that. Each novel won the Hugo in the year that it was released, which had never happened before, and I think that they were really deserving of that. The first book in that series, The Fifth Season, is one of the best fantasy novels I've ever read, and the series overall is a complex narrative about these people called Origins who have this magical ability to shift tectonic plates, and the narrative ultimately is about systemic oppression and climate change, and it's about the systemic forces in place that try to control and oppress those people. I just is absolutely stunning, love it, I think it's well loved for a reason. A recent book that I read and really want to recommend is This is How You Lose the Time War, which is a novel written by two authors back and forth in epistolary style. So we're following Red and Blue, who are two women on opposite sides of this massive time war that transcends time and space, uh, and it begins as this very clever cat and mouse between the two of them, but it evolves into a romantic rela relationship, and I just loved their dynamic, their ways of writing back and forth to each other, and also the world building I thought was really original. I know people have called this confusing, but if you're willing to just kind of buy in and go along for the ride, I think it's well worth it. The last fantasy novel I want to recommend is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which is a standalone epic fantasy, which in itself is a triumph, just because so many are series, and it's nice to read something that's one and done, but this is a complex world where different interpretations of a particular myth have affected different cultures and how they interact and, and relate to the dragons that are in this world, so some revere them and work with them and others are utterly terrified of them and think that they're the embodiment of all evil. The reason that I'm recommending this in this video as a queer book is that it, this is a uh, multi-narrative perspective novel and one of the main characters is a woman who is undercover and in love with the um, the monarch that she is trying to protect and so it has a great FF romance in there, but overall I think it's just a great fantasy novel.
I feel like this list would be incomplete if I didn't mention Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, which I was conflicted about including. No, it gets recommended all the time. I probably don't need to tell you what this book is about, but it was special and impactful for me because the protagonist, one of the protagonists, Alex, he's the son of the U.S. president in this fantastical AU where there was a woman who was elected president in 2016 and Trump never happened, and there's a lot of political hope in this novel, um, which feels very absent these days. Um, but Alex, he he always thought himself to be straight and had relationships with women, but his relationship with a man has forced him to question his identity, and it's one of the few instances that I can remember of seeing questioning like that happen kind of in real time on the page, and him thinking through things, and there was a specific line about something along the lines of how Alex was thinking that he's probably bi because straight people probably don't question their sexuality this much or think about it this much, and that just felt deeply relatable to me and uh, made me feel kind of seen in a way that I never experienced before, and I'm sure that representation exists in other places, but it was a really impactful moment for me in a book, so I wanted to shout it out here. The last book I want to recommend I'm doing so with major trepidation because it is so controversial. I do feel like this list would be incomplete if I did not mention A Little Life by Hanu Yanagihara, which I know has a lot of a lot of conflicting feelings about it, but from my personal experience, Willem and Jude's relationship was one of the most authentic and true that I've ever read. I've never had a power as powerful reading experience as I've had with A Little Life. The characters felt so real to me that I legitimately missed them when the book was over, and um, I just have never felt as as connected to a novel as, as A Little Life. And I've been scared to reread it, not because I'm afraid of the book for any reason, um, you know, it's a really difficult book to read for because it contains all of the triggers, but the reason that I'm afraid to revisit it is because how deeply it impacted me. It was emotionally exhausting to read that book because I cared about it so much, and yeah, it destroyed me, and I consider it to be ba maybe my favorite book of all time, and Willem and Jude's relationship is a key part of that, so uh, I feel like I had to mention it here. It's a beautiful book. Now we're on to the TBR portion of the list, the queer books that I want to get to, hopefully <laughs> in the near future. We'll see. The first is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. She has also written the Heartstopper series, and I really enjoyed the first volume of that. But what drew me to this book, I believe it has multiple queer characters in it, but the protagonist is bi, and I don't think that there are any romantic relationships in this novel, which I thought was interesting. And it also has other themes of things like trauma and fan culture, and I've heard nothing but good things about it, so I wanted to give it a try because of that representation, and the other facets of it also sound interesting to me. And I've already read and enjoyed Alice Oseman, so I think that this is a good, solid bet. I have a couple of classics on here, the first being The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall, which I originally heard about on Lydia Holmes's channel. You certainly should be watching her videos if you aren't, they are fabulous, and she also has been reading and talking about a lot of queer classics on her channel. She brought this book to my attention first, which is considered to be like a seminal lesbian classic of the early 20th century. It's a semi-autobiographical novel about a woman named Stephen, and it's about her struggle to exist under the, you know, social expectations and constraints of society, particularly in terms of her relationship with other women and not being able to get married to them, and I'm sure many other things as well. I'm also looking at her because I'm sure it hasn't aged well, and we have evolved a lot in our way of thinking about gender and sexuality, so there are a lot of things in it that could be considered outdated or likely offensive, but I'm fascinated by the idea of reading more queer classics and seeing how that understanding and that way of talking about these things has grown and evolved over time, and I think that this will be an interesting place to start. The other classic I want to read is much more modern. It is The Color Purple. I have been both meaning to read this and watch the film adaptation for years and years, but just haven't. It is feminist, it is queer, it has complex relationships between women, and it also examines some of the hardships in rural Georgia in the early 20th century. Uh, and I've also never heard anything bad about it, so I definitely want to read it. On to some more recent literary fiction. First is Politics the Form of a Mortal Girl, which sounds to me like a kind of modern take on Virginia Woolf's Orlando about Paul who can shapeshift, so he is able to change his physical form, including his gender. And from everything that I've read about it, this book, much like Paul, kind of defies strict categorization, and it sounds like a fascinating character study and queering of the 1990s. Another book I want to read is 
Under the Idolatries, which is a lesbian coming of age story that takes place during the Nigerian Civil War. I want to definitely read more queer books that are outside of like a Western canon or Western lens. And I've heard really great things about this one in particular. I love reading adult novels that are about young girls and coming of age and on top of um, exploring sexuality I think it also deals a lot with her being displaced from her home and dealing with the death of her father and I have heard really great things about it particularly recently so I definitely want to get to that one. Another one that I'm really interested in is The House of Impossible Beauties. This takes place in the 1980s in the ball scene in New York City and the founding of the first all Latino house. I haven't actually read any books that are about drag or drag culture before so I definitely want to get to that one. One that surprises me is that I really want to get to Conversations with the Friends by Sally Rooney now. I had kind of written this book off as one that I never wanted to read just because I didn't really like normal people, um, which I feel like, especially with like the hi all the hype around the show right now, is an unpopular opinion to have, but I did not care for it. And I didn't really think that I would like Conversation with Friends, but I'm more interested in reading it now because it has been recommended to me, specifically because it does have a bi protagonist. It's not like the only reason to read a book, but I am willing to give it a try because I do know people have disliked normal people and liked Conversations with Friends more. So. I hope I'm one of those people. One of the few books I actually have a physical copy of with me is Real Life by Brandon Taylor, which is a novel about a queer black man at a university in the Midwest. I know Roxane Gay really loved this and she mentioned in her review she was talking about how it's a book about the loneliness of being black in a mostly white space and that it has really powerful and beautiful writing and I've just heard it's extremely good and it's one of those books that I've seen the cover floating around a lot lately so I want to get to this one. Speaking of books that I've seen the cover around a lot lately is The Prettiest Star by Carter Sickles which I currently have checked out from the library and didn't actually know what it was about until I was doing some research for this video and it sounds incredible although just will probably destroy me. It takes place in 1986 after Rock Hudson um, had died from AIDS and it sort of that, that moment, particularly in the US, sort of changed society's understanding of AIDS and kind of reframed the, the focus and the narrative of AIDS away from it just being that like gay disease um, to an actual health crisis. And it's about a young man who has decided to return to his home in rural Appalachia from New York City because he is dying of AIDS. Yeah, it sounds deeply sad, but I really want to read a novel that confronts the AIDS crisis in a way that is better than The Great Believers because I didn't like that book that much. Um, and I think that this could be that, um, but yeah, probably will be devastating. I want to read more adult queer sci-fi fantasy, and I know it's out there. I just need to find the ones that I think will really speak to me. One that I'm pretty sure will is The City We Became by M.K. Jemisin. This is based off of a short story called The City Born Great that's about how cities are these living beings. Sometimes they go bad. I have read that this book has multiple queer protagonists and I feel very comfortable in M.K. Jemisin's hands because the Broken Earth series is fantastic as I already mentioned and I just think I'll really enjoy it. And the rest of the books on this list are nonfiction, as promised. The first is Genderqueer which is a graphic memoir. It began as a way for the author to explain their gender and sexuality to your family as a genderqueer and asexual individual. I haven't read anything like this before and it was specifically recommended to me by a group of librarians on a panel about queer graphic novels so that is what drew my attention to this and I've wanted to read it ever since. I also really want to get to In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado which is a an unconventional memoir that really plays with the the idea of a memoir and its form as she unpacks her relationship with a woman that was deeply emotionally abusive and the uh, the trauma and the gaslighting that accompanied that relationship. When I talk about form I mean that every section starts off with dream house as something and some of the sections are quite short some of them are a little bit longer but like things like dream house as creature feature, dream house as lesson learned dream house as Bluebeard and so it kind of like I said it kind of breaks the traditional format of a memoir um, but I've heard it's really great and I also really enjoyed Her Body and Other Parties and would love to read more things by this author so I also very much want to get to How to Write an Autobiographical Novel by Alexander Chi. I haven't read anything by him. I've really wanted to for a long time though, and this is a collection of essays that talk about a lot of things, including being Korean American, being gay, the death of his father, the Trump administration, gardening, and I just, I think it'll be really good. Um, he's an author that I wanted to try for a long time. 
The last book I have to share today is The Stonewall Reader, which was compiled by the New York Public Library. It is a collection of primary source documents, including letters, diaries, and articles that were written in the five years before and the five years after the Stonewall Riots. And so it is, is looking at what was being written about this particular moment in time and how people were thinking and feeling about it. And I'm aware of Stonewall as a thing, but don't know very many of the details and would love to learn more about it. This is a thing that the New York Public Library put out last year in honor of Stonewall's 50th anniversary, and I only recently learned about it, and I think it sounds fantastic. Those are the books that I wanted to recommend, and books that I'm really excited about reading soon. I definitely want to make more videos like this, like as I discover more books with by rep, I would love to make videos dedicated to that, and more recommendation videos in the future. As I mentioned before, I will have a list of my recommendations in like a bookshop.org list, and will hopefully periodically be updating that with things as I discover them. I definitely committed to reading more books with queer representation in them, and I hope that you are too. So I would love more recommendations in the comments, things that you would recommend, things that you really loved, things that you think I would like, and of course any of your thoughts on the books that I mentioned in this video. It's definitely not a perfect list, and it's not comprehensive in any way. These are just some titles that I wanted to share with you and so I did. Let's chat down in the comments, and thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time.